Virginia, but I showed up in Richmond, and gosh, I had a front row seat to what I consider the danger and insanity of one-party political rule. We had a Democrat-controlled Senate, we had a Democrat-controlled House, and we had Ralph Northam in the governor's office. So I sat through, for two years, what was just attacks on everything that was important to me as a conservative, attacks on our constitutional rights, attacks on life, attacks on my kids' education and their curriculum, attacks on our law enforcement, attacks on keeping taxes low and keeping government out of my life, attacks on how we conduct just our elections, uh, and we lost. We lost every time because we were in the minority. I showed up in the minority that year and had just really a front row seat to what happens when we don't have a voice. And I see that same danger and insanity of one party political rule happening in DC right now. We've got the Democrat controlled US House. We've got the Democrat controlled Senate. We've got a Democrat in the White House. And it's so frustrating and it's a dangerous way to govern. So we've got to change. This is, this is how we start to change things and get the country back on the right track is by flipping this congressional seat so important this year, but I certainly don't do it alone. I look out, every time I speak, like, I look out in the audience and I see people who have volunteered either to be in mail pieces, to be in ads, to knock doors with us on Saturdays, people who have given us donations, people who have taken yard signs, people who have magnets on their cars, so thank you. Politics for me has always been a team sport, and it's just been a great honor to have every one of you on our team. So we're going to do this together. We've got, again, 15 days in a wake up. We've got to get this done. But every time I, I speak and, and when we talk in the debates, I, I've run this entire campaign off really one theme, and that's restoring American strength. And when I talk about it, it's really there's four areas that, that I have been fighting for to restore strength in a country that I feel like is in a place of weakness right now. Number one is the economy. I mean, I had a person from my church text me the other day a picture of a bottle of, or a box of oatmeal, and they said, I used to pay $1.79 for this oatmeal, and they sent me the picture, and it was $5.99 at Walmart. So this is ridiculous. I went to the commissary yesterday, paid more than I have ever paid for groceries for my family of six. And I've ever probably told the cashier I've never paid this much for groceries, and I've been shopping at the commissary for 20-something years. So each and every one of us, I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent, we are all paying paying too much at the grocery store. It's a result of 40-year high inflation that the Democrats have caused. <laughs> that Elaine Luria has voted for. She's voted for Joe Biden's disastrous economic policies. She votes with them 99% of the time. This is why I'm running. I'm running to stop that wasteful spending. We've got to control our prices, not just at the grocery stores, but at the gas pumps. I've got three teenagers that drive. We've got five cars in my family. We pay a lot of money for gas. I mean, my kid's Honda Civic used to cost $20 to fill up on a weekly basis to get to school. I'm paying at least $60 for those kids to do what they need to do in a week. So every single person in this room is, is feeling that pinch of the gas pumps, the pinch of the grocery store, and that's going to drive people out to vote this year. Those policies, and Elaine Luria is going to answer for those. She votes with these guys. 99% of the time, but look at what the things she's voted for recently, the Inflation Reduction Act. Not only is that spending $1.4 trillion, but $80 billion of that is going to hire 87,000 new IRS agents, which are going to come after people like you and me that are the low and middle income earners. So th this wasteful spending and the priority that these guys have just of where to spend their money is wrong. So we've got to become, again, lowering those gas prices by becoming energy exporters, domestic energy producers. We were doing that until Joe Biden showed up and said, I'm closing and canceling the Keystone Pipeline, and he did that on his first day. And it's gone downhill ever since, so much so that now we're using strategic petroleum reserves, and we're almost out of those, too. We've, we can't continue to go down this path. So that's the biggest reason why I run, is restoring that strength in our economy. But secondly, restoring strength in our border. We look at what's happening at the, at the southern border right now. I had a chance to go visit with eight other Republican women that are running for office this year. And it's crazy. It's, it's not secure. We went down to Hidalgo, Texas, and went to the Rio Grande. And we saw the people on the other side of the river waiting to come across. We were there with Border Patrol agents who said, they'll, they'll, they won't come while you're here, but as soon as you leave, they'll come across. They'll wait across. There's nothing we can do to stop them. We're not supported. And it, while we were standing there, there was another group that had a ladder. They put the ladder up on the wall. They climbed over the wall. And, uh, and the Border Patrol just stands there. They put, the, they, they put the ladder back in the bushes as soon as this group went over. There was no, we were there with the sheriff. We were there with human trafficking supporters, nurses that worked in emergency rooms. We were there with property owners. And they said nine out of ten women and girls were either raped, sexually molested, or human trafficked as they come across the board. And they're stuck in stash houses, and they wear different color wristbands according to how much they, they owe the cartels still. Well, the Republican women I was with had had enough. This is not happening in our country, and we are on a mission to secure that border and to ensure the safety of not just the women and the girls, but the humanitarian crisis has got to end.
and we're going to make sure we're going to make sure that happens by restoring strength in our border. And then a real personal reason why I run is just restoring strength in our military. You know, I've, I served with, I served for 10 years as a helicopter pilot, flew H-46s and H-3s for 10 of the best years of my life. <laughs> it was awesome. But I'm married to an a F-18 pilot who served for 20 years. My dad was a Green Beret in Vietnam. My dad was a, was a postalman, or my grandfather was a postalman in World War II. So big military family. Uh, but, you know, for those of us in this room who have served in the military, you know, we provided stability in unsafe and dangerous parts of the world. And we did that because that's what the country asked us to do. We look what happened in Afghanistan. We just remembered the one-year anniversary of the political theater of Joe Biden saying we needed to pull out chaotically from Af Afghanistan. And he killed 13 servicemen and women. The blood of those guys will always be on his hands. And I'll speak about it every single time I talk. But what he did was he made our world less safe and he made our country weak. And it, and it was an embarrassment. And we're co our country's not the deterrent it needs to be. And we look at what's happening with Russia and the Ukraine. And we know that China is waiting and watching with Taiwan. And we see North Korea shooting missiles over Japan. We know Iran and other enemies are out there. And now I have, I have children now who will serve. I have a son who's a senior at the Naval Academy and another son who's a sophomore at VMI, Navy ROTC. So, so my children are serving. <laughs> we're very proud. But most importantly, I think of my kids, and I think of their friends, and I know that you put now my kids at risk, because they're inheriting a military that's weak in a world that's less safe. So now I'm a mad mom, and now I'm a mom on a mission, and that's not somebody you want to mess with. And I'm running against an opponent who's sat as a, she's been the vice chair of the Armed Services Committee. She's had a seat at the table. She's been in the majority party that controls the purse strings, and she hasn't gotten it done. And making television commercials, telling me how you're bucking the Biden budget when you've had a seat at that table for four years, it's time for you to be replaced. I can't wait to do that. <laughs> but it's... It's just, and watching her television ads, I mean, those, those things are unhinged. I apologize. I'm sorry. I mean, it has been, a, it has been a, a mess to watch. It's been one of the nastiest campaigns in the country, I've heard, which is not surprising. But, uh, but then the final reason I run and the final area that I really want to restore strength is in our communities. And we look at, we look at a couple things. We look at community safety. And we see our law enforcement that wasn't supported on the state level. I sat through that in 2021. And some of the legislation we passed was so harmful to those guys, trying to take away their qualified immunity, taking the way they conduct no-knock warrants, so making them liable for split-second decisions they have to make. We have to do better at treating our law enforcement like the heroes that they are and criminals like, like criminals. We can't continue to disrespect our law enforcement. Because of that, we're seeing recruitment and retention at 40-year lows. And we are seeing crime that's invading all of our neighborhoods. I know my state senate office is in Haygood and a good part, not nice part of Virginia Beach. And we had a woman get shot in broad daylight at a gas station right across the street from us. Our law enforcement can't continue. We can't continue to, to not be respectful, to not be supportive of them. So we have to restore strength for them. And that comes from leadership that starts at the top. So restoring strength for law enforcement in our communities, but also in our kids' education. That's as a mom of four, I mean, I, I'm very much watching what happened to the kids during COVID. I know that Governor Youngkin, that's a priority of his, making sure parents have a voice in their kids' education. Always important, right? So much work to do. You look at the test scores that came out today, and I'm sure our governor will talk about it, but at an all-time low, we, we can't continue to on the same course that we're doing. And we look at what the Democrats have proposed. I mean, just recently, one of our House of Delegates, Democrats, wants to expand the definition of child abuse to include parents that want to be involved for kids that are questioning their sexual identities, that you cannot, those are not abusive parents. Those are caring and concerned parents. So, and it's interesting because the minority leader in the House of Delegates, who's a Democrat, said, no, this, this legislation is ridiculous. So from within their own party, they're recognizing that they've gone a step too far at keeping parents out. So we're going to change that. And it's been an honor to work with Glenn Youngkin this year. It is night and day in Richmond compared to my first two years, 20, 2021, we're a mess. <laughs> this year has been awesome. Having sat through that the first two years and just, again, living through that, and not only was I living through that, but you all were living it with us, and we were kicking and screaming to educate people who sent us to Richmond to tell you what was happening there and, and what happened last year. Virginians were paying attention, and Virginians came out and voted last November, and we voted for change. We were not happy with the direction of our Commonwealth, 
and we, we got it done. Not, we got it done in a huge way, and people from all over the country were watching, and we restored so much hope for the rest of America by doing what we did, by electing a new governor, by electing a new lieutenant governor, by electing a new attorney general, and flipping our, our House of Delegates. Good job. <laughs> You did good last year. You, we did it together, and you did it last year, and we're going to do it again. And all eyes are on Virginia's 2nd Congressional District. So it has, been, it has been a fight. It has been the fight of a lifetime. I mean, I've, I've, I give 110% every day. I feel like the rest is up to God. But also, you all have a huge stake in this. So we've worked hard for a very long time, but now the ball's in your court. And I just want to – I need a couple things from you guys. I need, number one, everybody to go vote. Again, 15 days in a wake-up. We're so close. You can early vote. You can vote absentee. You can vote on Election Day with me, but go vote. And you can't just vote yourselves. You've got to bring some people out, right? So that's what we need. It's a turnout game. I don't know if you're watching the news and the polls. Neck and neck. Neck and neck. CNN, Fox News, all the national news. Are, we are t in a dead heat tie. We can win. Our polls are always good, but you've got to show up. So you've got to come vote. And then we need your help, so if you can grab a sign or a magnet or a bumper sticker or like our social media page, share our emails, tell your friends, make a donation, knock doors with us, make some phone calls, whatever you, small thing you can do to help. Everybody can help in a what, certain way, just like you did last year. So we need your help so these last two weeks, it's almost over, and then the ads and everything else will stop, I promise. But, uh, and then the third thing we need is just for you to be excited and enthusiastic. I'm so excited and enthusiastic to flip this seat. I want to do my part. This is the way that I serve. My whole life has been about service, service, right? Service to my country as a Navy pilot, service to my mom, not my family as a mom and a, and a Navy wife, service to my community as a nurse practitioner and as a state senator. This is my opportunity to serve. <laughs> so I love serving, and I can't wait to serve again in this capacity. With all of your help, though. <laughs> But we're going to do it together. Politics is always, again, a team sport for me. I'm just honored and privileged to have each and every one of you on my team. And it's an honor and a privilege to have our great governor on my team, too. So I was given this special red vest the other day. This is the first time I've worn it in public. So <laughs> in honor <laughs> of introducing our, our governor. But uh, again, he's, he's been a great team member to have for us. We did it for him last year. We're going to do it this year. I couldn't do it without his help and with the help of so many other people. But it's an honor to have him with us today. And with that, I give you our 74th governor, Governor